Let's take a look at uh, one of those clips uh, from the interview uh, with Jen Soto and the investigators. Stefan needs a lawyer. Who the fuck cares if we think he killed her? He's. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I said. But that's the problem. You don't know why. So the reaction in your mind is you are continuously protecting this guy. So why do I sit here and believe that you don't? Because right now, you know Stefan killed her. You know Stefan's been murdered. Do you know without her body, can he be charged with murder? I don't know. Exactly. So you don't know what we can do. Do I think we can charge him with murder? It's not up to me. Should he be charged with murder? Yes. Please. Does your role in her life lead this to happen? I'll be honest. Yes. Since she was a child, since her victimization started, it occurred under your roof and you acted like it didn't exist. And knowing the victimization, knowing the victimization, knowing how ongoing it is, knowing that you saw a picture of it, not just us telling you, not me and him saying, hey, listen, you've been I think they had a bad relationship. They showed you a fucking picture of it and you still protected him. So how am I supposed to not think that the thought process in your mind is until she's found, Stefan can't be charged with murder? Because we both now know that you don't want him to be charged with murder because you want him to have a lawyer. No, I don't. That Part was, of the blow job. That was oh, then. you can't be charged with murder. That was then. Everything that you guys have shown me since then and have shown me that he's So we have to show you a picture time? of her dead in the car for you to finally not take his side? Do you not see where I'm coming from? Like, I'm not trying to no. be a no, here, no, but it makes absolutely no sense that you were never to his step. I don't know. It's almost like throwing uh, water on the Wicked Witch is kind of what it feels like, where she just, she feels suddenly <laughs> emotion, and then she gaps it back up, and then she's like, okay again. Um... I mean, I, I believe she's feeling real raw emotion, but I don't know if it's because her daughter's dead or because uh, Stefan's been charged or she found out about the horrible things that he was doing or that all of her sticking her head in the sand and letting this stuff happen has caught up to her and now she could possibly uh, face the wrath for that. Yeah, I, I go with option D. Yeah. Um, I think she's truly worried about that she could face the wrath. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, the interrogation done by this officer, I thought was A+. Plus. It's it's truly, um, if people want to see it, now they're getting to, to take a true look behind a curtain. That's a good interrogator. Yeah. He starts out very early. He builds rapport. He, he lays all this, the stages, but he lets her know this is her chance to come forward and help because remember this was before there was a body. And, and I think he probably truly believed that she might know where the body was. I think it was clear from that, that she didn't know where the body was, mm -hmm. but that has nothing to do with what I think she should be charged with. And that's the negligent role she had in the abuse. Right now in that interview, uh, she has a specific type of immunity where she can say anything and nothing's going to be held against her. If new evidence comes up uh, in this, she, she could still be charged. Why does she have immunity uh, in, in something like this for someone who really is very responsible uh, for she is the soul. She is mom. She is the only person truly responsible for her daughter. Why is she getting immunity in these in, in these interrogations? Well, I think that at the point that they offered this to her, it was because they were truly trying to find Maddie and make sure they could make this murder charge. Because even though the bravado you hear in in you know the words of that investigator, the bottom line is I don't know if a prosecutor certainly at that point would have been able to make the charge. It was way too early um, to make a charge of murder and they were trying to get there. So, but it is very limited, Tony. And what they did a nice job of doing was sort of staying away from those questions regarding her neglect. Mm -hmm. And I think that was very purposeful. In other words, they didn't have them go really day by day and, and the build up and, you know, when did you first start? They they did a good job of, I think, staying away from this neglect charge that they could 
ultimately still charge her with. I'll be surprised if they don't, because they don't really need anything she said to make the case. Sure, sure. So basically, they could call her back in and interview her and say, this one doesn't have immunity, but you need to answer these questions. Or, of course, you could lawyer up, too, um, which she probably has right. by now. Or um, but, but or when, they could just charge her, Tony. That, yeah. They could just charge her with the neglect mm -hmm. portion of this case. Uh, and, I, and I hope they do. Not wanting to get anything out of it, just truly putting her behind bars for punishment for really facilitating this whole crime, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes you, I mean, wonder to think if, if she does stay out. I mean, look, this she clearly is not a healthy human being. She clearly uh, put her head in the sand enough or, the worst, enabled uh, her boyfriend to abuse her daughter. She's a danger to society. God knows what else and who else's life she can destroy uh, out on the streets or out in life uh, just with her toxic way of, of thinking. You know, it's so true. And and really, quite frankly, I don't know if they've answered all of the questions regarding her complicity. Mm -hmm. And I think they're still researching that and trying to figure out what they could possibly charge her with. Yeah. Um, but is she a danger to the community? Uh, well, she would be a danger, in my opinion, to any child that yeah. were in her care. I would say not in the sense of like a murderer in the community. I think more long term. Uh, of this where relationships she forges wherever she whatever she does in life she will be the destructive force in in all of that and and will ruin other lives and someone could someday look back and then go well why wasn't she locked up look what how complicit she was in this look at how how what of a participant she was in this um i i, I do hope they find a way to lock her up because this is uh, I'm, I'm shocked already that she has not been. Are you surprised that she's not been arrested and charged yet? I really am. Um, but I do understand, too, you truly get one bite at the apple, and they need to have all their ducks in a row. And again, you're going to want a prosecutor that is willing uh, to prosecute based on a beyond a reasonable doubt mm -hmm. situation. I know everybody says, yeah, they just need a probable cause in their in criminal complaint or in the indictment. That that is really a misnomer. The fact is a prosecutor wants to believe there is reasonable doubt or he's not going to move forward. That's the standard that a prosecutor has, even though that's not the standard of law for a criminal complaint for an arrest affidavit. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially Apple Podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.